the job of changing Turning Point's business model was very easy, actually, because at that time, we were running, or I should just tell you, one of the reasons why it was easy at Centerpoint, well, not easy to raise money, but one of the reasons why people could see the connection was because we had Princess Diana as a patron. And so people saw me and saw Turning Point as a good, a good thing. And in fact, at one point, it got to the point where um, I would appear on television with the good lady, and a friend of mine who had a sort of six-year-old son would see me on television and run out and get his mum and said, look, that's Victor, that's Victor, that's Princess Diana's bodyguard. <laughs> so it was kind of easy. At, at Turning Point, it was easier to move the business model away from fundraising because, amongst other things, Turning Point provides services uh, for people with forensic mental health problems, personality disorders, step-down, semi-secure services, people coming out of Broadmoor, Rampton. So as a fundraiser, you can imagine the scenario. You know, Saturday morning, you're just getting out of a lay-in, somebody knocks on your door. I can't do the knock, 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 but oh, that's that. You open the door, and there's a very kindly-looking person with a tin or with a form for you to sign up, and they're saying, support your local neighborhood semi-secure unit. I don't know about you, but it's not the kind of ask that has most people reaching into their pocket. So for Turning Point, in order for us to survive, we had to become commercial. I'm not, I use that word deliberately, commercial. We had to design a business model that ensured that we could deliver services in perpetuity by delivering value to our commissioners, and I might get a chance to talk about commissioning in a minute, but plough any surpluses back into the business which defines or starts to define what is a social enterprise. So when people ask me what the difference is between a social enterprise, charity, business, I say this, and I usually start with the difference between working at Turning Point and working for any private sector provider of health and social care. The difference is this. If you work for Turning Point, when you get up in the morning, you're legally obliged to improve the lives of our 160,000 clients, right? For whom we provide services in 250 locations across learning disabilities, mental health, substance misuse, employment, commissioning, and all points in between. On the way to doing that, it'd be a good idea if Turning Point was financially viable, safe, and growing. Although I always say it's better to be good than big. If I worked for Turning Point, I don't know, for Boots or United Healthcare or something, when I woke up in the morning, I'd be legally obliged to improve shareholder value and the longevity of that value. On the way to doing that, it would be a good idea if we were safe, legal, and growing. And you might know, what's the difference then? The difference is, for Turning Point, the bottom line isn't shareholder value. I have the privilege of providing health and social care services to our clients without the pressure of investor concerns. Doesn't mean that I don't have any concerns. It doesn't mean that we are not a business like any other business. It doesn't mean that, we'd have to, that we don't have to focus on efficiencies, on professionalism, on outcomes. It just means that one particular concern is removed. I'll illustrate it further. I once got a phone call because Turning Point's uh, balance sheet at one point, I, think, I still think it's the case, looked brilliant. Are you still with me? You on the journey with me? Um, it looked brilliant. And I got a phone call from one of these uh, investment houses. And this guy who sounded incredibly energetic. They all sound, they've all been trained. I don't know what it's about, but they, you know, they, they ring you, I picked up the phone and it was, hi, hello, how are you? And it was, well, I'm fine, you know, so straight into it. I've looked at your company, what a fantastic story. Well, your balance sheet is brilliant. We'd like to buy you. I thought, that's interesting. You know, I'd like to buy you. I mean, I'm, li I I'm listening, I said, I'm listening. He said, well, I'd, we could all make you, we can, we'd want to we'd keep your um, top team, of course. We'd want to put this, this amount of money in. 
um, but we'll be looking for an exit. And I'm thinking, exit, exit. And I'm looking around the, my office. I can see an exit, but what, what's he talking? Of course, he's meaning, how, how do we get the money out? And he said, well, you know, you, Turning Point's a limited company, Turning Point Services, which is owned by a charity, Turning Point Charity. We'd buy, we'd buy into that, and we'd pull the money out. And I said to him, yes, but what would that mean for our clients? And he went, clients? What do you mean, clients? I said, our service users. We operate in 30-odd percent, actually, it's nearer 60% now, of the poorest neighborhoods in the country, as defined by the Neighborhood Renewal Units report in the early uh, 2000s. We provide services to people at the sharp end of the inverse care law. Uh, the inverse care law that states those people in need of health and social care most tend to get it the least. It's still alive and kicking. And I said, how do we maintain that mission and make money for people? And he said, I'll get back to you. I'm still waiting for the phone call. However, what we have done as an organization is take the view that our job is actually to make as much money as possible. Now, that sounds really odd, doesn't it? Charity chief exec standing up and saying, our job is to make as much money as possible. I don't think there's a conflict between the two things. The reason why we've got to make as much money as possible is to plow it back into producing innovative services. And let me give you an example of a service that I consider to be innovative. And you might disagree, but that's OK too, because I've got to answer some questions, haven't I, in a minute. Back about four years ago, uh, amongst other things, amongst uh, my portfolio, which is running Turning Point, I was also asked to um, help rescue a New Deal for Communities program. As some of you might know New Deal for Communities, yes? That was going belly up. And when I went to this estate, what I saw were people who were unemployed. Um, I witnessed people with severe and enduring mental health problems, families with children who had learning disabilities, substance misuse, and unemployment on this estate. And what dawned on me, the, the more time I spent there, and I spent a long time there, probably too much time, according to my wife, anyway. And what I realized was that on this estate, people were living surrounded by services provided by the local authority by, and by the NHS. But I swear to God, if I took you to that estate at that time and stood you in the middle and said, show me evidence of the welfare state, you would be hard pressed. And in fact, I did that on a number of occasions. And people from the local authority and from the NHS were puzzled because the people living on that estate didn't use the services until they were an extremist. They didn't, they didn't, they, they still referred to social services as the welfare. 